attention to this now. The state capture inquiry continues this week. We saw uh, Angelo Agriti return to the stand, revealing more Bosasa dirty laundry. Last week, he claims the company paid millions to the ANC's top six and that uh, prompted the ruling party to apply to cross-examine him. Well, ENCA's uh, Aaron Bates is covering the inquiry for us and uh, she joins us live from Parktown. Aaron, good morning to you. Without wasting any time, Talk to us about uh, what's on offer this week from the State Capture Inquiry. Yes, Oli, well, we've just had information this morning that Clint Ullerman, who's currently with the Competition Commission and used to work for the Special Investigations Unit, will be today's witness. Uh, the inquiry spokesperson is not yet disclosed in what capacity he'll speaking today, but of course we know that the SIU conducted an investigation into Bosasa and filed a report in 2009 recommending prosecution of a number of people, including the witness we saw last week, Angelo Agritzi. Interestingly, the CEO of the company that was Bosasa, Gavin Watson, wasn't among the people recommended for prosecution in that 2009 SIU report. Uh, but it's possible, and only possible, it's kind of a bit of speculation, uh, that we may have more on Usterman's uh, insight into work at the SIU over Bosasa. And of course, just going briefly back to what came out last week, Nomvula Mokonyane reacting to the latest that has been said by Angelo Agritzi. But uh, it would seem she has more beef with the inquiry than the person who's singing. That's certainly one interpretation of a very strongly worded statement from the Department of Environmental Affairs, and you're quite right. Uh, she began that statement talking about her grievance over a claim of undue process on the part of the Commission's uh, team. Uh, she's saying that she never received initial notice or a heads up, really, that she'd be implicated in Agritzi's initial uh, evidence. And in fact, when Agritzi first testified, of course, that was all under lock and key uh, until he took the stand. And we all discovered this uh, man, this character from Busasa and his allegations of corruption around the company. None of the people named and implicated in his initial statement were notified as per the regulations of the commission. And uh, the legal team actually forwarded uh, application of condonation on which the chair has not yet ruled. And that application of condonation is really a way of saying, in these circumstances, we would like to deviate from the regulations for the following reasons and then submit a legal argument on why they think this uh, deviation can be motivated for. But that's something Mokonyane has an issue with, that she wasn't given due notice initially. And she says when he appeared last week, she and her legal team were only notified on the Wednesday night, with him appearing on the Thursday morning. So she dealt with that grievance. She also said that she intends to apply to the commission to cross-examine Agritzi, also to deliver her own evidence as a witness and to call other witnesses. But she did in that statement deal with any of the merits or not of the allegations against her by Angelo Agritzi, including his claim that she received 50,000 rand cash a month, along with a slew of other gifts or favors he claims she got from Bosasa and its leaders. Aaron, just very briefly as a last point, uh, we know that uh, the focus has been on Bosasa in the past week, and it would appear that uh, as the new week starts, the SIU or Bosasa might still be in focus. But at some point this week, we are going to go back to the Guptas uh, on this issue of state capture. And it does appear that we might have a former MEC from the Free State, a Mr. Mkolisi Togwana. Uh, talk to us briefly about uh, what uh, he might possibly tell the Commission. Yes, well, that's a witness we had expected to hear from a little earlier, and there were some sort of uh, deliberations over the administration linked to his evidence. And, of course, the Free State will open up a whole new chapter of the Commission's evidence, uh, particularly in light of some of the allegations against the former Premier, uh, Es Mahashule, who was uh, quite prominent in reports in the Sunday papers yesterday over allegations of corrupt and linked to his leadership of the Free State. The Freda Dairy Project, for example, which uh, was funded by the Free State Agricultural Department and was the subject of a, a rather unsuccessful slew of litigation in the Free State High Court, uh, all links up with the mandate of the Commission of Inquiry into allegations of state capture, fraud and corruption. And so, as you say, as of Friday, we may well begin to open that chapter on the Free State and it's quite possible that the name Esma Khashule will come up under that banner. Yep.
That's a man very much in the news, especially from uh, the weekend newspapers and a new book published on him. Thank you very much, Erin Bates. Uh, she's our colleague at the State Capture Inquiry. Let's